what I'm going to look at here is a method that I use in order to make a magnified inset in Photoshop that you can use to highlight specific areas of interest that you may have within the image. In this case, as you can see, this is a toupee mosaic of the Pella Nebula, and it can get a little bit lost. Um, and so I wanted to highlight it and make it a little bit more visible and also keep in a context of scale, which I think is very important. So here, this is the propeller nebula itself. And what we've done here is magnified it, brought it out so that you can see that particular area of interest. And also we've highlighted the original area of where it's taken from so that you have an idea of context and scale within that image. There's another one here. This is the tadpoles. Um, and again, what you can see here is the tadpoles have been highlighted, only circled so that you know exactly their size within the main image. And then they've then been pulled out, magnified, so that you can get a clearer and larger view of them within that image. As I said, we're using Photoshop for this. So here's one I uh, opened earlier, Photoshop. And this is a picture of the cave nebula. Um, it would be advantageous to have a decent resolution image in order to do this. It will get you better results. So the first thing to do, <clears throat> you've identified an image where you think that there's an area of interest that you would like to highlight. In this case, this is going to be the cave nebula. And the first thing I do in this in order to keep things nice and easy is to rename the background layer. So rename that one original. Right, what we're going to do now is go up to this menu here, click on it. This is the uh, marquee tool. And if you right click your mouse, you can pick here rectangular, elliptical. Those are the two that I'm going to I'm going to use. Uh, in this case, I think uh, elliptical would work better. So I'll click on that. And just a little tip with the uh, elliptical tool in order that you make a perfect circle and not one that's squashed or any other kind of uh, shape is if you hold down the shift key at the same time as your left mouse key and pull the circle out to the size you want, let go of your left mouse key, keep your finger on shift, let go of shift and you have got a perfect circle. Without doing shift, try and make a perfect circle and then you'll understand just how important and how good that particular shortcut is. <clears throat> so we've highlighted the area that we're going to use. And what you do now is you right click your mouse key and click on layer via copy. So now you have the original background, what we're going to use as the background. You have a layer of solely the area of interest. So we're going to double click that and we're going to call that small detail. Detail with a D, not with an S, detail. OK, we're then going to copy that. So drag that down to here. That duplicates it. Double click. And we're going to call this large detail. Again, this is purely for um, the purpose of confusion and lack thereof. Um, if you want to call it something else, and that's absolutely fine. It's not important with what you call it. What I'm then going to do is create a group. So go down to this key here and click on it and you have created a group. Drag with your left mouse key, drag the group to under the large detail layer. And then we're going to put the small detail and the original into that group. And what you do is you highlight it by clicking on it. And then with your left mouse key, you just drag it into group. And you can see here that this one has moved slightly to the right. This one is still right far to the left. And this shows that small detail is within that group and the original isn't, even though it's underneath it. So highlight the original, just one click and pull that into group. And you can now see that you've got large detail, which is a separate layer there. And then you've got small detail and the original, which are within the group. Make sure that it's with a small detail on the top of the, with the top, the upper, uppermost layer within group, and that you've got original on the lower layer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to edit this entire group. So click on it just once, go to edit, transform, and scale. And click up here on the link and what this does is it links the weight, the weight, it links the width and the height of the image um, and it will keep them to the same aspect. So if, for example, you put 50% in the width and then it will put 50% of the height. 
if you want to transform it so that you've got uh, a, a higher width or a higher height compared to the width, and then you just don't need to click that. But in this case, we want to keep this all tidy and we want to keep the scale the same. So what we're going to do is we are going to decrease the size of the background. So we're going to put in there, um, let's say 50%. So what's happened here is that, let's, let's, let's see. What's happened here is that the background has now shrunk to 50% of its size. And because we did the whole group, this small detail will also shrunk to the same size. And large detail, this layer here, which is the one you can see on the top, has stayed to the same size. So we go to the move cursor, do apply for the transformation. And now what we can do is click over here on large detail and with the move, we can now move this around. Okay, so let's just move it there for the moment. You can put it anywhere. You can put it outside, you can put it inside. We'll just put it there. Okay, so you can now see the basis and the bones of how this is gonna happen. So what we now want to do is we want to highlight with any color of your choice, um, both the outer selection here and the outer selection of the original marquee tool. So to do that, go to small detail, double click, go to stroke, double click and pick a color. Uh, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm always quite keen on orange actually, I'll pick orange. Just move that around. Okay, as you can see there, I now have got an orange box around there. Now you might want to make it fatter. Well, I can't see quite why do you want to make it that fat, but anyway. Uh, we'll keep it at about five, I think. And do okay. What we then do is that we right click on small detail and we go to copy layer style. We will left click on large detail and highlight that. Right click and do paste layer style. So now you know that you've got exactly the same colors, exactly the same size and everything on both of those. If you want to have a different color um, outer edge on this magnified inset and then you don't do that and then you just would double click on it and then select its own color. So we really have now got the bare bones in here. What I'm going to do is just enlarge this a little bit for the next step. And what we then want to do is we then want to just finish this off by putting lines across to go from one to the other. So in order to do that, we go to this menu here. And again, there's all various different, different uh, shapes and whatnot. We go to the line tool. And first of all, I'm taking the style away. So there's a number of styles, etc. you can have if you go to there. And then there's a whole host, if you look here, of styles you can have on the lines. I don't want any style at all, so I've clicked no style. What I've also done, what you can also do there is set the colour. Ah, I hope I remember which colour it is. I think it's that one. Is it or is it? Maybe it's that one. Okay. It is good if you uh, remember the colour that you used. So you selected the colour. You can see the colour up here. And all you do is you draw one line from there to there. And here you can change the width of the line as well. And draw a second line from there to there. And there you have it. If you minus that out. What we'll then do is crop it down. And you can now see that you have got a magnified box showing your area of interest. Now, what you can do, you don't have to keep that within the um, within the image. You could have pushed it out 
you could have put it out to the side here and then you would have to have expanded your canvas um, in order to allow that to to be in an area otherwise it's just hanging there in midair um, you can do all sorts of things with this once you've worked it out so what I'll then just do is go to layer flatten image and there you have a magnified inset box of an area of interest.